Hello everyone, my name's Tom and welcome to Code Vault. As you've seen in previous videos, if you've watched it, um, I'm trying to get started with Home Automation. We've installed uh, Proxmox and Home Assistant already. And today what I want to do is I want to install Zigbee to MQTT. Um, main reason of this is I've bought some uh, a couple of buttons and some temperature sensors that are all Zigbee powered. I've also got a dongle, which looks like the one you can see on the screen now. Um, it's a Zigbee one, it should be pre-flashed with the appropriate firmware needed. So what we're gonna do today is uh, try and get this installed. So I've already gone ahead and I've plugged the, uh, the dongle into the back of the little mini server running Proxmox. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to add a USB device to sort of theoretically insert that into the um, into the virtual machine. So opening up Proxmox, we can go to the virtual machine. It's um, number 100 um, and Home Assistant OS. It says 9.5 there. I think that's just what it was called when it was installed. It's actually version 10. Um, it's been updated since. But what we can do is if we go to the hardware tab, click on add. USB device. Uh, we want to add a specific USB device depending on which port it's plugged into. And then if we go for this drop down, we can see we've got a device ID manufacturer and it's a uh, Texas Instruments CC2531 USB CDC. Clicking on that and pressing add, that should theoretically insert that device into Home Assistant. Um, and we should be able to see that by, I think if we go to settings and system, hardware, uh, all hardware. I think somewhere in here we should be able to find the, uh, the new device. Maybe. Or not. Okay, so I've just restarted Home Assistant um, as it didn't seem to be picking up the USB, but now we should be able to get the terminal. Um, and if we ls USB, uh, we can see this got this device here, which is uh, 4051. And if we go back to Proxmox and look at the hardware, we can see it's 4051 16A8. 16A8. So that's, that device is now successfully passed through. So we have got the Zigbee device mounted um, into the Home Assistant virtual machine. Next thing we're gonna to need to do then is we are gonna to need to install um, an MQTT broker. So the one that's recommended for Zigbee to MQTT is Mosquito. It's a nice last weight one and you can do that from the add-ons page. Just click this, press the install button, and just like any of the other add-ons, should install pretty quickly. Um, what a broker is, is MQTT is a messaging protocol, um, and the broker accepts those messages and publishes it on subscribers. So it just lets um, Home Assistant integrate with MQTT and it runs the MQTT broker, so it gives somewhere for Zigbee to MQTT to publish to. So I want the watchdog on, I want it to auto-update, and I want it to start. And that should fire up. Okay, so to install Zigbee to MQTT, what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to install another add-in. Now this isn't um, there by default, so we're gonna to need to add a repository. Uh, so if we just go to the three dots in the top, uh, manage repositories and we can add, I'm going to paste this in, I'll put a link in the video description, but it's just um, from the uh, MQTT repo, so we can add this. Then if we close this, and then I think we should just be able to uh, search for ZB now. Or not. Uh, let's give the browser a refresh, see if it needs to read those. Um, there we go, so we've got Zigbee MQTT. So the, the one we want is the this one, which is we don't need to be on the development build or anything. I'm happy with the sort of main line, the one that's probably gonna be most stable. And we'll press the install button. And again, we'll take the watchdog, we'll have auto updates, and I do want it to show in the sidebar. And we should be able to start that up. Uh, 
Check the log, see how we're looking. Okay, error while starting. What have we got here? Um, failed to start Zigbee. Check the documentation for possible solutions. Ooh, you don't have it. You know ent. That's probably because we've missed some configuration. Let's see what we need them. Okay, so I think configuration wise, what we need is the MQTT broker. Um, is going to be this, so core mosquito. Uh, it should be what the uh, mosquito broker is called. And then we need to find the address, or the, I guess the path to our serial device, um, which is system, it is hardware, fuel hardware. And this should tell us our serial ports. Yeah, so TTY ACM zero. Oh, but it's exposed as this. Of course it is. Okay. So weirdly that's the device path, but this is the ID and I think actually maybe it wants the ID. So let's let's try that. So that could be the serial port. Um, and then as per the instructions we were just reading, we need this as the MQTT. Save that. No, it doesn't like that either. Right, I see what we need to do, I think. So I think what actually what we need to do is this needs to be called server, and in quotes. Right, so these are actually YAML fields. That's my, my uh, misunderstanding of what we're doing here. I think if we do port and then quote this, Right, this is now a valid uh, dict as or dictionary as Python would call it. So let's that at least gets accepted. So uh, what if we now restart? I'll start this. Connection refused. Not authorized. Okay, so I think this is a username and password um, thing. I believe what we need to do here um, is create a new Home Assistant username and password. So, we will go back to the configuration. I think in here, this has a user, which we're going to call MQTT. And just for now, MQTT is going to be the password. Again, for the purpose of the video, I will go back and change that. So if I save that and then hit restart, that's still going to fail because I think I need to create a new user in Home Assistant. So I think we can do this from Manage People. And we need to add a, add a user. Uh, display name can be MQTT, it's MQTT, MQTT, and MQTT. Again, if you're following along at home, pick a better password, I will be going back. Uh, can log in from local network. I'm going to leave both of those blank for now and see if we can get away with giving them as, as little access as possible. Um, but I think we'll see. To add on Zigbee MQTT. So right, we go to configuration. Uh, we've got this. Um, if I look at our log, what have we got? That's stopped. Let's start it. Connecting. Not authorized. Now, given this is effectively connected over a network, I am going to say that that user we created needs to have access from local network. That's a guess, at least. Um, we'll find out. Who knows, eh? Who knows, indeed? Uh,
Still not authorised. Ah, fantastic. Right. That's started up. Um, okay, so when adding the user, it looks like we needed to also restart um, Mosquito. But that's good. We're up and running now. So does that mean... Um, if I just take one of these buttons as an example, I'm going to hit the permit to join button. So this should allow new Zigbee jo devices to join. If I press the uh, the pairing button on this uh, Zigbee button I've got. So it was at this point in the video that I spent ages trying to work out what was going on. Uh, Zigbee MQTT would start up, it would crash. Um, I eventually ended up finding out the dongle we were using wasn't particularly compatible or at least has some issues with x86 architectures. So we'll uh, pick up after fast forwarding through all this debugging um, a few days later when hopefully I found a bit of a solution. So let's see how we go. Okay, it's now a few days later and there's been some issues. Um, so when I was trying to pair those devices, it wasn't working. Now, looking at the logs, what we were seeing was Zigbee to MQTT would start up uh, once, crash um, with an error, which looked like some kind of timeout. Now, a bit of research later, the dongle I was using, the, uh, the CC, whatever it's called, See, apparently has some issues on x86 systems. So I think if you're using a Raspberry Pi, you're probably absolutely fine with this dongle. Um, and in fact, the reason I got this was I knew a few people that were using it. But given the Proxmox setup I've got on the little server, I think it's uh, best to change another dongle. So I bought one. Um, so for about £20 off uh, Amazon. I've got this new dongle which I have read around and seems to be based on a chipset that's uh, supported by Home Assistant. So all we're going to do now is pass that through, um, get the hardware ID, set that up and change it. So let's do that now. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to the virtual machine. We're going to go to hardware, we're going to, so that's the USB device, that's the old one, so for now I'll remove that. Then we're going to add another USB device. Uh, it's going to be the new one, which is the Silicon Labs Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 USB dongle. Okay, that should now be mounted on the Home Assistant machine. So what we should be able to do is if we go to settings... Uh, when we've done this a few times already, but setting system, hardware, all hardware, we should hopefully see our USB device here. So we can get the ID here, that's the device path. Copy that. And we should be able to pop that into the Zigbee MQTT settings uh, or configuration. So yeah, rather than that was it, the CC2531 was the one that I don't think it's going to work. So fingers crossed this one's going to work. So we'll save that. Go to info and we will start Zigbee to MQTT. Give that a second just for the CPU usage to die down after the restart. That's usually a good indication that we're getting somewhere. Uh, and then we will check the log just to see what we've got. Whilst that's happening, I'll have a sip of tea. I'm impatient. Let's just check the logs. Ah, ZBM QTT has started. Perfect. So if we go to this, we should have this. Right, so we can permit all. This allows new devices to join. If I press and hold the button on this temperature sensor, I've got... Um, so on these particular ones, it's just a little button at the top and you press and hold it to the light starts flashing. It's flashing, so if we let go, straight away it's detected. Okay, so the dongle just wasn't compa uh, compatible. Give this a second just to identify itself. So it's, um, as far as I understand, it's part of the Zigbee protocol. Um, it'll discover itself with just its ID and then 
Uh, it should learn the friendly name and all this kind of stuff. Ah, so it's, there we go, it's picked it up. It's got a picture of the thing it knows a manufacturer. I'm not so sure about its friendly name. Uh, this one is going to be uh, the bedroom temp. Uh, and we'll also update our Home Assistant Entity ID, rename that device. Excellent. So, can we see what values we've got? There we go, so we've not got battery, but we've got a temperature reading for this room, and apparently it's 22 degrees Celsius. Brilliant. Okay, that's Zigbee set up. Um, I've got one other device to set up. Uh, so, I'm gonna go back to the devices. If I just press and hold the join button on this one, this should be a small button. Oh, there we go. Uh, and this is the button I wanna to use to control the smart lighting I've had fitted in this office. Uh, so it's just, I'll get into what it is um, in more detail another time, but it's a thing called a, a Shelly, which is sort of a smart light switch, but lets you keep your own switch. It's a little relay unit that sits behind the, uh, the switch itself. But that's the intention for this one. Okay. That one's added and done, so we should be able to rename this one. This is gonna be Office uh, Switch. And again, we'll update the Home Assistant IDs. Fantastic. I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed watched it. If you wanna see more of this content or if you wanna see more of the uh, device repair content, I've been putting out recently um, please do like this video subscribe to the channel um, and I'll see you in the next one bye for now